Good afternoon. It is Wednesday, March 8th, and this is my fourth drive now with FSD Beta um, 11.3.1. Um, it's again a mix of city and highway, uh, like most of my routes. So, again, instead of fast forwarding through the highway portions, this time I'm going to include the highway portions and not try to fast forward through them. So, um, I will try to keep my talking to a minimum and uh, describe again just kind of you know what's going on kind of what I'm perceiving around the vehicle and whatnot when certain events happen here but um, so far um, I think this release is at least three or four steps forward maybe a step backwards in some cases um, I've seen some excessive hesitancy on the highway portion where it needs to make a lane change to follow a route or pass somebody there's a gap and the car just refuses to use it even though there's ample room so it seems like Spatial awareness wise, um, Tesla is being very, very conservative. And since this is the first public version 11 release, um, where that FSD beta code is now a single stack for highway, I totally understand why. Um, but definitely in the minor releases coming up, I hope they kind of make it a little more aggressive once they get some data and some miles under their belt um, that proves that again, their tolerances are, are safe and, and whatnot. So. So right here, we're kind of stuck behind some cars here. I'm gonna actually signal and see if it goes around this guy. And of course, as soon as they start going, <laughs> I do that as soon as they start going there. Anyways, you saw the car would have made the, the lane change there. So um, that was good behavior, but. All right, and it's a little tight because of the snow and stuff like that. This is Minnesota winter problems here, even though we're getting close to the end of winter. Um, yeah, it's it's something that that's a good move right there, and we have to be in this line anyway. So, um, one thing somebody was asking me about, they were asking about um, the the stoplights were blue, and you can kind of zoom in here. Oh, I thought so. Anyways, if I had MCU three, I could zoom in, but I'd have MCU two. But yeah, you can kind of see the stoplight is blue, so it's definitely now highlighting which traffic light it's it's keying off of and making its decision, decisions to stop or go based on so that's really good especially when you have an intersection looking ahead here where you have you know four or five visible traffic lights here so that's another welcome change you'll also notice during this drive the reason why it's stopping if it's stopping for some sort of traffic control you'll see it highlighted up here or if it's a pedestrian or whatever All right, so I've taken this route before many times, the FSD beta, and I find it interesting. This is the first time where it didn't want to enter the far left turn lane. So I've seen it, that's an interesting change there. Um, there's no differences to the road markings or anything like that. So that's definitely something new. All right, I'm gonna have to take over here. So as you see there, um, there was nobody there, but had there been, that would have been a problem. So um, I'm gonna actually leave a message here car entered wrong lane after making left turn. So getting back to that, love the voice feature, definitely gonna be using that as much as I can. Um, and hopefully providing some helpful context to the team when they're looking through the data points that we're sending off. But um, that intersection's tr problematic, but you know, I know in California, a lot of the intersections have dotted lines that are painted to indicate you know, where, you, where to go when you're making a turn across intersections. We don't have that really in Minnesota. Very, it's very rare. So that's definitely something that um, you know needs to be improved in terms of car behavior. The car still definitely gets confused on which turn lane to go. It's like if you're in the outside lane, you should know that you should key off the right side curbing then really, but great job with that back there. Uh, in previous FSD beta builds, the car would go way too slow through that section and I would always require a throttle input and it would always kind of go back and forth because it's kind of a wider line or a wider a lane. Um, it would go back to the right and go back to the left and it would just kind of confuse traffic behind us. So that is definitely an improvement. Um, 
you saw right there, the car really stayed close to that inside yellow line and was very confident. There was no seesawing of the wheel or anything like that. So, I mean, if anything, I would expect it to be a little confused when the roads are a little wet right now, but no issues there. So good to see some improvements. You know, again, like there's been m multiple steps forward so far with this release that I've seen. Um, still room for improvement, no doubt. Um, but yeah, good stuff overall so far. Again, you'll notice with the lane changes now, for the most part, if there's ample room, the car does a great job of getting over and not hesitating or waiting too long. Um, one thing that was a big complaint of mine with Navigate and Autopilot, especially when you were making speed-based lane changes, it would wait five seconds, and then of course it would require a wheel wiggle too um, for it to actually make the lane change. So it's just a lot of time, and if there's even light congestion, the car would never get over. You'd have to manually d disengage and then take it and do it, do it manually. So um, I'll see a lot less um, disengagements now as a result of this improved logic here. Yeah, maybe two seconds is probably what I'm thinking in terms of when it initiates the turn signal to when it actually ex starts executing the turn. Um, but that's a definite improvement over the five seconds we saw previously in the Navigate and Autopilot. This is a tricky one up here. Let's see how it does. Navigate and Autopilot previously would have a really struggle around this curve here. And wow, that is so much better. Um, than what I've used to before with version 10 and during Navigate and Autopilot. So that section with the previous Autopilot stack would go all over the road, It'd go right, left, and it would just zigzag because there's a little bit of a blind corner where you have to kind of hold to the inside because you can't see the outside line because it kind of goes off camber there. Um, that used to be a big problem area where sometimes I'd have to disengage there, it was so bad. Um, other times it would get it, but if somebody was closely following behind me, they'd be like, what the heck is this guy doing? You know, <laughs> they were watching behind me and trying to see what the heck I was, where I was going. Because um, if you go to the right and you hold the right too far, you're exiting the freeway. So you have to make sure you stay to the left, but the beginning of it, you want to stay to the right. So yeah, it can go wrong really quickly if you don't come through there with the right line. But as you saw there, flawless execution. Again, no seesawing of the wheel. So whatever they've done with the neural nets that are now doing some of the vehicle control functions uh, and their path planning, obviously, which already was neural net based, uh, some big improvements that I'm noticing so far with that. So, you know, again, I'm looking for things that are like gonna hold promise for the future here. And from what I've seen so far, there's a really good foundation here that they hopefully can build off of and continue to iterate upon. But that back there was like the most eye-opening <laughs> piece where it really puts to shame the old autopilot code. Like, I never want to go back. <laughs> So I'm really glad this code's available now to public users because it's going to make a lot of my freeway driving, I can already tell, a lot more enjoyable because I won't have to babysit it as much, which is really nice. A little bit of slowing there. Not sure what it saw. Maybe it was at that stoplight up into the right into the distance. That was something that would catch Navigate and Autopilot up previously. Uh, where I'd always have to you know, give it a little bit of throttle input because it would almost detect that we were approaching that. Um, as you can see, it's pretty far away, but um, the car, I didn't have to apply throttle input. It was a very slight slowdown. We were still within three car lengths of the, car, uh, of the bus in front of us, so um, didn't really have any issues with that. It recovered pretty quickly and wasn't abrupt. One thing I can tell you for sure that I've experienced so far is there's been no phantom braking, especially abrupt phantom braking. I've discovered a little bit of slowness sometimes, but it's usually to re you know, retain two car lengths um, behind the vehicle that we're following. So, But again, when it slows, it's maybe a mile per hour or two, and then that's it. Again, if you look at the, 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 the display here, 
when we got close to that school bus, it gave that school bus a treat it like a semi, which it's a big vehicle. Um, we got to the right of our lane and, and stayed there until we passed that school bus and then it centered itself. So that's something I've seen with every large vehicle I've come across so far with version 11. It does a great job at detecting those big vehicles and giving them space. Because if I'm driving myself manually, that's what I'm doing. And that's a great behavioral trait that I hope they do more of. All right, so we have to get over to the right. This line eventually ends up here. Let's see what the car does. This is something it previously did where it would like to stay in this lane too far to the end. And if somebody's in our right lane, they're gonna squeeze you. But nobody was there, so not really a problem, but. Somebody come up on our left here. It looks like that person ended up changing lanes. So, car did a great job there of, of speeding up, though. When it needed to go, once it decided I'm going to make a lane change, the car accelerated at quite a good pace there. I'm impressed. And just so you're aware, too, I am in, I was in assertive. I'm going to go back there. But I'm in the assertive driving mode. So, um, just to quickly show you here, um, the navigate and autopilot settings like Mad Max and those modes, they're no longer there. So they are pretty much gone now and replaced with this driving profile setting here. So you have chill, average, and assertive. So um, I like the more aggressive lane changes. I still think it's not aggressive enough, but you know, that being said, that's what I usually stick with. So. Again, good job with that lane change there. The auto lane changes are continue to be a great, you know, enhancement of this of this new way of doing things with version 11 of single stack. So can't speak highly enough about those. So what's interesting here is Navigate Autopilot. This is this road's been laid out differently since the maps, or basically the difference from what the maps show. And the car previously would try to get over and you can kind of see it's fighting itself because the old map the, the old map data that's probably three four years old that they the tesla's still using in the twin cities this lane wouldn't exist the, this row would have been that wide there would only been like three lanes here but right now it's four and back there i think it was five so um you can see the car is making the right decision based upon what it's seeing versus what the map's telling it so I hope Tesla is using that data to actually fix the map data too, um, because that's something that we've been woefully behind in the Twin Cities. But I'm really glad to see the car ultimately, the extra lane, you know, lane signals and whatnot are kind of annoying, but it does the right thing and that's the most important thing. Versus before, it would miss this exit almost, unless I manually told it to change back over to the right lane and then it would then take the exit and, you know, switch to FSD. But A little bit of a tight line there in front of that truck. That truck pulled way too far forward, but still did a good job navigating around him. Um, I had maybe a couple feet to spare when we made that left turn there. So, you know, again, impressed with the behavior. Maybe it took too tight of a line initially, but it figured itself out. So and it, did, it didn't disrupt traffic behind us to do so, which is, which is the most important part in my opinion. All right, good job getting over there for that car. It started suddenly turned um, so that truck was kind of way out of you know completely out of our way by the time you know we were coming over that crest there and it still slowed a little bit um, I'm not going to report that to me it's just based upon how conservative they made the system in this first you know public release of version 11 I anticipate that to get better the 69 to 25 was honestly pretty good in that regard when vehicles were cutting or exiting their lanes and 
going somewhere else, you know, turning off, turning off the main road that we're on, the car would do a good job not slowing up. And now it seems a little bit kind of a little bit, a little backwards, you know, per se. It's it likes to slow down early, which is fine as long as it doesn't do it abruptly. And as you can see, it it wasn't abrupt, so overall not the worst behavior. You can see it again right here. I mean, we got three or four cars behind that car that was turning there and it still thought it needed to slow down. Is there a weird fork at the road here? Let's see if the car figures it out and goes around them. A little bit of hesitation there. To be honest, it's a very tight space, so I'm not surprised the car kind of... They're actually going to be tearing this chunk of road up, so I'm not caring too much what the car does right now since this is all going to be redone here later this summer. So that stop sign is horribly positioned too, and the car always tries to stop for it. And I did signal there because this lane does end, and it's kind of a weird way it forks. So... But in the end, no, no disengagement, just an like intervention there. So. All right, we're making a left turn on my uh, Fillmore Street here. So let's see how it does the stop behavior again. The signal's pretty, pretty late. I would rather see it signal maybe 100 feet or so behind where we started there and then slow down a bit more gradually just to kind of indicate what we're doing. And again, the speed limit is still wrong in this area. I'll definitely be disengaging and reporting that. Hopefully they get that, but that's something I've been emailing them about. Um, all Minneapolis residential roads are 20 mile per hour speed limit or less, um, it, unless they otherwise indicate. And for whatever reason, they can see the steel map data we have. It still says 30, which I don't know if 30 has ever been the speed limit in residential roads, but that's what it tries to do in my neighborhood. So I always adjust it when I engage FSD. Really poor visibility on both sides with parked cars and stuff. And being very cautious, but overall really good. So um, that concludes this drive. I hope you enjoyed watching and I will see you in the next one.